good evening, and welcome to the world of Viceroy. I'm using a new lapel mic that seems to be of lower quality, so please let me know if it seems of too low quality. And, uh, you know, probably just comment. You can dislike the video if you want, but you probably just comment is better. So we set up the game for a solitaire play, which means we have four total gems of each color for each player. There's only me, and because um, it's solitaire. Uh, uh, then we randomly took two of each color for ourselves. Oh, not randomly. We took two of each color for ourselves. I uh, then randomly put two back into the reserve. So that's the total reserve to draw from up there. Meanwhile, we w aren't playing against a dummy player the way many solitaire games will have you do. Instead, with this one, uh, the only thing that a dummy player does, so to speak, is randomly draws a gem during the bidding phase, and they may compete with you for bidding um, to try to get the, the cards on offer. But this is a drafting game where we'll have 12 rounds in each round. There'll be four here on the first chance auction that you can bid for with blind bidding, and then they'll move up here. And we're building our pyramid of power, which is really just a kind of a tableau, a display. It's uh, an engine building game, sort of, but it doesn't focus as much on the engine as um, a game perhaps like Splendor. It's, it's, it's a lot about the combinations and set collection for end of game. There's a little bit of engine building. So here's our reserve. We don't have to keep it hidden behind the screen like you normally would in a two to four player game. We start the game with three law cards, which are special uh, cards that you can play into your pyramid, usually for free. I'll look at them in a second. To get a special ability or a special uh, bonus, they count as a building. And whoops. I have these in sleeves. I have like all the Kickstarter stuff for this. I ordered it separately since I did not kickstart the game. But, um, and like the promo stuff as well. So what we do is we start the game by looking at a hand of three of these characters. We have the saboteur, the inspector, and the viceroy. Now I have extra of the viceroys because they're promo and I think I accidentally bought too many and they're extra good, they're a little overpowered. Which means in a multiplayer game, more people are going to be bidding for them. But in a game with just Mr. Eldridge, um, I'm going to usually almost always pick them. So you place characters down into your pyramid in horizontal rows. Uh, then you can stack them on a the next level of your pyramid by putting two on one, or one on two. What's uh, special here is that the rainbow one means it can count as a green also, so that would work for the bonus, but the color that it makes doesn't have to match, but that would give you a bonus at the end if it does. So it's putting down these and then getting the bonuses that they get you for each card. The bonus is for whatever level it's on. So these only give you level one bonus. This guy gives you level two bonus. However, you don't just pay the price for the level you're on. So this gets you um, this cool sword here. The sword and three gems of your choice. And it, it costs, the cost is on the left side here. It costs a red gem. Um, but your cost is always equal to the level it's on and every level below. You just get only the bonus of the level you're on. But they're increasing in power and value, typically. So what we do is we're not actually building our pyramid right off the bat with all three of these. Just like in a multiplayer game, every person starts with three. You pick one to build down into your pyramid for free. So I'm going to pick the Viceroy. Uh, then you pick one to keep into your hand, meaning you can play cards in your hand uh, later, as long as you pay for them. And then I'll pick one to discard. I think that I will discard the saboteur. 
and keep the inspector. So note that I have a hand here as well. Enough explanation. I kind of am explaining this uh, game as though you're vaguely familiar with the game. Maybe you've heard about how it plays a little bit, but uh, you're not in completely sure. But you haven't played solitaire before, so I'm just kind of running through solitaire play. So every round, we bring out four new cards from the large deck. The large deck is always 48 cards. The small deck is the draw deck. Those are special abilities or whatever might let you draw from them. And uh, that is uh, less than 48. But this one has to be 48 because it's 12 rounds of four. God, I hope my math is correct there. All right, so we have some cool cards here out, and we have to decide what we want to bid on. We will bid on by selecting one of our gems, and then we'll simultaneously, simultaneously with the other person, hold it out and show that we're bidding for it. If we both bid for it, then unless we can agree on it, which this person's a robot, so we can't agree, uh, neither of us will get it, and we'll have to try bidding again. And there can be three bidding uh, sessions for each phase. Alternatively, we can pass. And if we pass during bidding, we will get three gems from the reserve. And there's bonuses later that can give you more gems for passing. But right now, I think it's fruitful for me to try and uh, bid. Oh, uh, before I forget as well, because we place this down, we immediately get the reward since it's at the base level of our pyramid and the first card we play in the game was free. Normally we pay the two gems here on down there. We get the reward, which is three victory points. And to show that we got them, I have these in these little tubs. They didn't come with this either, but these were just a uh, Dollar Tree, Dollar Store tubs that I recommend. I forget if there's a clever way to quickly find the number that you want. Oops, there it is. So, whoops, three. And that's just show, reminding that that's the bonus that you got, and perhaps some abilities later could take off or change the bonus you got from a card in your power pyramid. And then it's a point salad thing at the end. You just kind of go through and uh, everyone counts up their points. And again, since there's no robot we're playing against other than a, a blind bidding from the bag against us, which also didn't come in the game, but these velvet bags are nice. Therefore, you're just trying to beat your own high score. And I don't really have a high score that I remember or wrote down. So this will be my first high score. I, I'm already won this, I've already won this game. It's a personal best, no matter what. But what to bid on here? For this first round, let's look at the cards on offer. All right, we got this guy. For the base level, cost a green gem gets us a magic scroll. Magic scrolls can be good for compounding exponential points later on. This guy costs a blue gem, which we have, and would get us three gems of our choosing. Not too bad. Having more gems is useful for buying cards by bidding, other than paying for actually building them. Because first you have to get them in your hand, and then you have to... Uh... This one gets us our magic multiplier and that's good because the idea is you know you get more multipliers and more scrolls and therefore if you get three scrolls then three of these you have three times two six points from that as an example this one just gives us three gems as well and of course we keep them and save them and buy them later when we're able to put them higher in our pyramid and get the higher rewards but right now because i'm not as good at thinking about Lots of different layers at once and multiple things. This game is really a brain burner for someone who is highly uh, clever with being technical and mathematics and so forth. They w would do really well. And that's the opposite. Hey, sweetie pie, I'm doing a video now. Hey, no, no, can you go the other way? No, no, this one, no, over here. No, no, buddy. It's Viceroy right now, sweetie. No, no, move off the, t move off the table, please. Sorry about this. Honey, you gotta move off the table. No, no, no. Here, I'm gonna move you, okay? There you go. There you go. Sorry about that. 
So um, let's go ahead and bid. Enough dilly dying. I'm not going to pass. I want to get a gem, and I want, I want the magic scroll here. Now, regardless of what it costs to pay for its effect, you bid based on where it's located up here. So you can only bid if you have it. So I'm going to bid the blue. So Michael Eldridge bids blue. That's one of my aliases, Michael Eldridge. I think it's cool. Maybe it's not cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's be real. And uh, our competitor bids red. So this doesn't count as part of the reserve when you do solo play. This is just to get in your way, potentially. So I get... I have to pay this to reserve. And I get this cool guy. So he's in my hand. Now we are in the development phase, which is the building phase. And there's three rounds of that, meaning that if you can pay for them, everyone can potentially buy three new buildings from their hand. Now I have, excuse me, I have two regular buildings here. This costs a yellow, which I have and just gets me a new card from the draw deck, which is nice. This one is green and gets me magic, uh, magic scroll. Now, thankfully, with my Viceroy, because it's a rainbow, no matter what it attaches to, it'll work there. So I kind of want to keep my Viceroy in the middle. And since there's no uh, competitor, we don't have to worry about timing. In theory, we both build our building each um, round of the building phase, you know, at the same time, but in case there is a uh, a conflict with what would be resolved, like we both had to get gems from the reserve, and there's only one enough for one of us, the lower number card resolves first. But we don't have to worry about that here. That's just a little bit of information. I'm going to pay a green to build this one right here. It's on the first base level, so I only have to pay the bottom. To make enough room for everything to fit on the screen, I'm gonna have to cut stuff off a little. Green goes to the bank. Again, there's no competitor. Competitor does nothing. So I go ahead and I get my green scroll. Uh, it's not on this one. It's, it's on the other side of science, magic magic it is super cool all right now we have a second round of development phase and i see no reason to stop building hmm it seems to me that building uh labor cards at the base level is especially useful because you build them for free. So I'm going to build this labor law. <laughs> it's funny, it's simply called labor, uh, or this law card, it's simply called labor law, okay. And what this does is it makes it at the end of the game you gain an extra three points for each complete set uh, without overlapping ones for multiple sets. Shield, uh, spells, magic, and science. And those normally give you a bonus as well, but this would give me an additional bonus. As a quick interlude here, let's look at the back of one of the player screens that you would use in a multiplayer game. And let's look at the bonuses you can collect. So that's at the top there, that's showing that's how many you take from the reserve. Down below here, that's showing that you put that victory point on it to show. This icon is showing that you get that number of cards from the small deck. Oh, so this isn't actually the scoring explanation. This is just icons reminding you what each thing does. So uh, attacking is not going to be that useful, I think, in this game because at the end of the game, every opponent gets a negative score based on swords that you have that's minus by their shield. So if you have two swords and they have one shield, they get one negative point for that. Um, however, I have no opponents, but you can still use a sword to discard that sword during the game. And if you do that, even if someone bid uh, 
on the same thing you did, instead of neither of you getting it, you can discard that sword to get it. It doesn't actually... Oh, and I'm even misremembering that. You use it instead of a usual bet, and you simply just use it and go, oh, I'm just taking this. Yeah, effectively the same. Make the other person waste one. These are infinite stones down here. So when you put these down on a card, these are cool because you can uh, use these once per turn, kind of like in Splendor, the cards you get, to pay for building, but not for bidding. Bidding is like a separate thing, but to build increasingly good things, having more infinite gemstones is good. We talked about the magic the scroll dividers, the uh, multipliers. So that's, you know, scroll times this is that point. And um, finally, these are giving you a bonus for each infinite gemstone you have. Also, each infinite gemstone you have will give you a point, uh, points equal to the level that's on the highest level that it's touching. So one here gives you two. If it was here with two, but it would have to match, which it doesn't. And, uh... Let's go into the rule book here real quick. Uh, here we go. This is the score. I'm a little rusty on this game, as you can see. I'm making these videos because hopefully it's either educational or interesting or relaxing. It might be none of the above to you, but I watch a lot of playthrough videos because I'm like, oh, this is interesting and relaxing and I can feel like I'm playing through even if I'm not. It's vicarious. So single color circles. So these bonuses here will give you a bonus for each single color circle you have and each infinite gemstone. An infinite gemstone, I didn't really explain what that is, but if you got one, you'd be like, haha, here's one. Let's say this labor card gave me an infinite gemstone. You would just put one from the reserve there, and then that's one free I can use every building phase. So that's pretty darn swell. Pretty darn swell? What am I talking about? All right. So uh, I built the labor card, and I lied. I don't want to put it there. I want to put it here, because then it will still be matching up with the Viceroy color there. So that was building phase round two. I can, you can pass and stop building. You never have to build. But unlike passing with bidding, um, it doesn't give you any bonus gems to do so. Um, let's see, I have this one called Referendum. At the end of the game, so you can see it here, getting one additional victory point for each card you have in your pyramid, including those underneath other cards, because you sometimes are allowed to get a law card that or whatever that covers up one. Whoops. So I'm going to get this one because this will give me bonuses for simply having more cards, which therefore maybe I'm it's advantage uh, advantageous to build a lot at the base of the pyramid since that's cheaper but i'm done building for now i have one building card left and one labor card left a uh, law card i keep calling it labor. there's only one labor card down there and uh yeah so we're on to round two of 12. It, it goes faster now that I've explained stuff. These slide up that haven't been taken. That's their last chance to be taken is this round. Then four more come out. I'm wiggling my arm in a weird way and I had too much caffeine, so my hands are shaky. And I'm always a little shaky. And I'm not even old, I'm quite young. Hmm, all right, we have some interesting stuff out here. But I'm not as worried about keeping those, and these could come later. Oh, you know what, I did something wrong. The solitaire person doesn't just bid on one, that discards it from the game as well, and you act like they got it. 
So I'll do that next time. I forgot what they what they got. Oh no, I bid blue and they had the opposite. They had red. Therefore, this one should be discarded. We act like our imaginary opponent built this. All right. What do I want to bid on? Well, I like the idea of getting more buildings. This could be more gems, and I'm starting to run low on gems. I'm going to bid on green. Because um, it would get me more gems, and I have a red over here. I could add it, add it to. Alright. Michael Eldridge bids green. Opponent bids blue. So. I uh, forget when you, when they bid blue and there's two to choose from, which one does the opponent take? Okay, they always discard the one at the base. So, I bid green, and they bid blue? Oh man, my memory. Yeah, blue, I think. So, this one gets discarded. They bought it. And I get this green one. Nice. Now it's building phase. I am going to pass because I want to get some gems. So uh, since I'm passing, I what kind of gems do I need? I think more, more blues and because I use this up more blues and green. So I'm going to get two blue and one green. Oh, uh, crap. No, I'm a liar. I'm contradicting myself already. You don't get gems if you pass during building, only if you pass during bidding. So I'm simply not going to build anything this bidding phase. Uh, this building phase, jeez. All right, so these get discarded. The next bidding phase is getting ready. Thematically, they're supposed to be like a bit of a fantasy, but more historical, with like a Machiavellian intrigue and po politicking and things. It plays like a, I don't know if you'd say light or medium or even slightly heavy Euro point salad tableau, tableau building. I think medium. A true Euro gamer would, would say it's light, but I believe this is medium weight. Um, Ooh, now I do want to get that Viceroy card, though, because those are extra good. But I have no green to bid on it. So I am passing. But let's see what our opponent get. Ah, our opponent bought the Viceroy by bidding for green. Well, now I can get my two blue and green that I wanted. I'm not going to build. Well... No, no, uh, no, I'm going to build this one. It costs me one blue. Oh, no, never mind. Oh, yeah, no, that's good, that's good. I'm just being crazy. Yeah, it costs me one blue. It helps complete the second part of, of three parts of this circle here. And I get three gems. I would like a green and two blue again. Oops. Very good. So that's all I'm building. So building phase is complete. Next bidding phase. These disappear. These move on. Oh, 
Let's see, what do I want? What do I want? All right, we have a Viceroy out again. I forget how many Viceroys I have. You can see some of them have different art. But I really like them. I'm going to bid for the red, try to get that Viceroy. I'm bidding this. Blindly, our robot opponent bids blue. All right, so they get the blue at the base. I get the Viceroy as I'm choosing it. Yes. And... Now is the building phase. Hmm. Is there a hand limit? I don't think there is. If there is, I think it's weird that there is. I'm gonna say no, because you can only build three per turn anyway. I don't know. Let's build this down. And we'll get a building card from the small deck by doing it. It's not too bad of a deal. Actually, now when you get that, that's really good. It, you can build it from the small deck, which is just more buildings, or more, I, I call them buildings, but they're people, really, or from the law deck. So that's one of the rare ways to get a law card. So I'm building this paying a yellow. It helps match up here. And now I get a new law card. Uh, wait, what? Oh, no, no, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reassignments. Replace any card in your pyramid with this one. Move all tokens, if any, from the replace card onto this one. Take the replace card into your hand. You may play it as a law card in any of your turns. All right, so that seems pretty cool. You still get the tokens from it. And then the card that you replace you can play for free as a law card, because law cards are free to play. That's super duper good. All right, so um, as phase two of the building phase, I am going to do that, I think. No, I won't do that. I'll save this for later. But I will build this Viceroy. And I will build it on level two. Now, because I'm building it on level two, I only get the level two. Actually, no, let's save this for level three. It just seems so much better that way. I keep changing my mind. All right, finally, I'm building this one down. Defensive measures. Choose to either place a shield on this or to place six or to take four gems of your choice from the reserve. Four gems is quite good. I'm going to put this here, which at the end of the game will count as two points at least for having this, plus any bonuses. That's not the same as an infinite gemstone. That's just a, a completed circle. But I'm going to go ahead and get four gems. These tokens also don't come with it, and they're really not necessary. Even chits are fun to play with, cardboard chits. But, uh... The little plastic gems, there's an extra bit of fun to be had with that. Okay. So we have a bunch of gems. And, uh... Now, you know what? I am going to pass for building phase, so we're out in the next bidding phase. Oops, don't look, don't look, Michael. Whoop. I'm not sure if I saw that right. Ah, what am I doing? I'm pretty casual with how I do this.
Well, well, well. What's quite good for level two? The Forester is quite good for level two. But it doesn't match up that well in here. The Arcane... Arcane one matches up perfectly here, red at the bottom, blue on the right side. And, uh, five victory points is not so bad. I'm gonna bid for green. And our opponent bids for green as well. Whoa, the, the, yeah, yeah, so darn. All right, so this simply gets discarded. And we bid again. Or I can pass and get three gems still. Once you get a building though, you can't pass anymore. Uh, I'm gonna bid on green again because there's no psychology behind if they're gonna try the same thing or different because in solitaire, obviously, it's just random. All right, they bid blue. So this guy goes, Oops. I bid this green. So I get this one. Building face. All right, now's as good a time as any to build this Arcanist. So I'm going to get the five victory point reward on it, but I have to pay both the red and, oh no! I don't have any reds left. Darn, I'll build it later, that's okay. All right, passing on building phase. Next bidding phase. <laughs> Another Viceroy. I know it's called that, but why do I have so many Viceroys? What did I do to get so many? How many started in the game? I guess it doesn't matter too much. Mm -mm, but I'm a bit for it. As a general rule, my preference is to always bid on Vice Royce. Bidding L. They bid blue. Blue for you. Viceroy for me. All right, very good. I think so. Now I'm going to do it. I have to bid. I have to to buy. Um, uh, build it. Build and bid. The words aren't that similar, but I keep confusing them. I have to pay two gems of any color and one yellow. Placing it here. I don't know how I'm going to make this fit in. We'll see. And I get the reward. I'm using it to draw a law card instead of a regular card. New laws. Draw three cards from the law deck and add them to your hand. Then return any two law cards from your hand to the top of the deck in any order. Nice. Okay. Oh. oh, so that's if I build it down. That's pretty darn good. Oh, I'm doing well, because that's going to give me more total buildings. Which is what I want. Then, in that case, I'm going to build that down now. Built. So I draw my three law cards and return any two from my hand. Turn.
this one and this one. Oh, to the top of the deck, right? Uh, which means I might get them later anyway. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna build this one next, I think. Replace any card in your hand with this one. Move all tokens, if any, from the replaced one onto this card. I'll do it for the Viceroy. Take him back. And then I can play this anytime I want as a law card. So for the third and final building phase, I'm placing him as a law card, which is great, because then it'll be on level three for free. And then I place two infinite gemstones of any color that I want. So let's get a red infinite gemstone, this can be used to build with, and a yellow infinite gemstone. Excellent. And those infinite gemstones in themselves, because they're on level three, are worth three points each, plus any bonuses. And that's the end of the building, building phase. Next bidding. That's the one I have a uh, missing a sleeve. I'm going to bid for the strategist, yellow. Opponent is bidding for yellow. So I lost it. We bid again. I have no yellows left. Uh, I will. I can use some science to get more bonus for when I pass. But I have no reds to bid for that science lady. Well, she only has science high up of the pyramid. I will just pass. Meanwhile, opponent got the green card. Passing, I will take a red, another red, and a yellow. All right, I'm going to play during building phase, military conscriptions, one of my law cards. I'll place it here. And I'm going to use it to take four gemstones from the bank. So I'm going to be really loaded up with gems. Won't have to worry about that too much for a little bit. Uh, speaking of which, actually, I think I made a mistake because there's only three red gemstones available in total. So we need to get another one. There should be four between me and the reserve and my tableau. It did seem a little light. All right, here's another red one there. Okay, in the building phase. Viceroy. All right, I'm not going to talk about them anymore. I have an ass. Uh, not, let's not cuss. I have a buttload of Viceroys. I have so many. The game should be named Viceroy. It is. It is. You're not funny, Michael. Yes, you are. You're pretty funny. 
I mean, not hilarious, but it's amusing enough. We're doing pretty good so far with uh, making our whole circles. That'll be good for points later. And we love points, because it's a Euro-ish kind of game. Everyone's definition of Euro game is completely, wildly different. It's pretty much incoherent, but you kind of get a general vibe about what people mean. I'm bidding on the Viceroy for green token. Opponent bids red. Opponent takes the Chancellor. Michael takes the Viceroy. Now I have so many Viceroys, I should build some. And so I shall. I want to get that, uh, another third level Viceroy, because it seems to me that's where they really shine, is when they're higher up, which makes sense. So I'm playing it here. And that costs me a blue, a yellow, and then two others. I'll pick two more blues. Uh, but I have an advantage here. This one away. Because I can use the yellow and the red infinite gemstones to save two. So I simply have to pay two to put it up there, which is great. Uh, then I can place infinite gemstones on it. Now we'll get a blue and a green. So we have one of each in infinite gemstones. And the more you have in infinite gemstones, because they come from the reserve, the less total gems will become available over time. Resources become scarce. Shall we build more? We can build another one up there. I think we should. I think it'd be crazy, but this would be like a Viceroy trilogy. We three kings of Orient are. No, let's save it for next time so I can use the infinite gemstones more. That makes more sense. You can only use each infinite gemstone once per turn, otherwise buying any building card would be free always, as long as you had one of each. New bidding phase. And during this, I'm pretty rusty, and I have lots of games, and I play lots of games, and I get passionate about games, and I'm excited about them. I love the theme, and the aesthetics, and the mechanisms, and the social aspect, which is not included in solitaire play, of course, except to the extent I record it, I suppose. But um, despite loving all that, I play them pretty casually. If I get rules wrong or someone else does, you know, I might help out, but I won't make a big deal out of it. And if someone forgot to do rules earlier, then ended up helping them. I won't be like, ah, oh, you didn't really win. Just, you know, play to have fun. We try to stick by the rules and do our best, but we don't go crazy with it. Now, let's see. I really, I could use more tokens. I have gem, infinite gemstones, but I could use some magic multipliers, some science. That's the gears. Let's bid for yellow and try to get that science one there with that kernel. Bidding this. Robot bids. Blue. Robot takes this one. I take. This guy. And now it's development phase. I'm gonna go ahead and build him on the second level right here it doesn't match up perfectly but there's ways at the end that you can potentially fix that and uh, uh, everything on a level has to have both things underneath that just imagine it's like a pyramid can't topple I think that was pretty obvious but it bears worth repeating what? so I get a gear token it's on the opposite side of scroll tokens now when I pass, instead of getting three gemstones, I'll get four. That is pretty good. 
and I use a red and green infinite gemstone because that's its cost, this is first and second level, to build it. Very nice. Next phase, next round. Double gear up there. Do we have any magic multipliers around? Hmm. That guy does on the third level. No, on the fourth level. I don't even know if I'll end up building fourth levels very much because I'm trying to get more total cards. And also, I have to squeeze this uh, more, but I could do that. All right, what should we bid on? And we get a uh, bonus naturally, but also an additional bonus every combination of uh, gear, so which is science, shield, defense, and a scroll. We have a scroll, we have a gear. Having a shield wouldn't be so bad. Let's bid on the recruiter. He's red up there. And our sexy AI bids on blue. They take this away. I get the recruiter. Woo! Join me on LinkedIn. Uh, whoops, the recruiter, okay. I'm going to go ahead and build this fellow. Because I want that magic bonus right away. I'm going to build it at the bottom here. I'm going to use my infinite green gemstone to pay for it. And I get our first multiplier for magic, plus two points for every scroll we have. So far we have just one scroll. But we want to get more. Should we build anything else? This is discarded. Let's build another Viceroy. Can we pay for it? It costs four total. No, we can't without, because we used our first infinite gemstone. That's okay. New bidding phase. This uh, mat is pretty nice. I like mats because they help cards slide better. And when you, it, especially if you put cards in sleeves, but not exclusively, cards can stick to tables and mats help with that. And they feel nice because they feel like mouse pads. And uh, someone, somewhere figured out that when used for other purposes as well, mouse pads feel delightful, firm yet soft. I'm getting weird. Getting weird. Maybe I don't need that Viceroy anymore. I mean, the bonuses that he gives aren't that great. It's really that he has the rainbow uh, colors that makes him especially good. But uh, you know what? I can really win this if I go for infinite gemstones and uh, try to get the gemstone bonuses. Just not a lot of those have popped out so far. Actually, here's one. So, it's for level four though, but still, that's really good. Let's bid for that armorer. Green versus red. Armor is mine. Armorer, armorer. Now it's building phase, let me try to move the Pad. All right, I'm gonna build that armorer. So our first fourth level pyramid person. 
So it takes two blues and a green and a yellow. We've got a green and the yellow. We have one blue, so we have to pay one additional blue that we don't have an infinite gemstone for. Now, at the end, we'll get four bonus points for every red infinite gemstone and red completed circle, plus the points it would give you for the level it's on. Same with infinite gemstones. Very nice. End of development phase. It's a pretty sprawling game now that I think about it because every player has their pyramid and you have the offer. But that's okay. It doesn't feel sprawling when you play it unless you record it and place it on the internet. We're coming down to the last few rounds. So I need to find ways to pay my stuff. I still need to get a uh, shield to get that complete set. And I could use more magic. Hmm. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, once there's none available anywhere anymore, that'll be the end. So we're in the last few rounds now. Yeah. Uh, that's the only thing that I still have in my heart desire. So I'm going to bid for the governor. Let's see if we get the governor. We do. This is extra, I just miscounted, I think. Um, so they bid for red. And building phase. I'm gonna place it here. Not ideal placement, but I will get a shield on here. And I will get two gemstones. I'll take a blue and a green. It is a game that because there's so many things to work out and there's less randomization than a lot of games and just deciding what people will bid on is one of the kind of psychological direct head-to-head -head things as a result of that. It's a game that if people took their time they could really get into analysis paralysis be like all right if I get more of this redstone then I can paint more but then I won't be a, it would just be endless so you really have to set a, a timetable and just say that a part of it is doing it intuitively working it out completely like a puzzle every turn it takes an hour-long game and turns it into a three-hour math problem some people are into that but those people are not fun people So we spent a yellow and a blue infinite gemstone to pay for that shield guy. Next round. These go away. And now there's only two on offer. I would like to get a uh, This bonus for green guys here. Let's bid for, for yellow. Opponent bids blue. There's nothing on blue for them to take. So I get this yellow one. This disappears and it's gonna be game in. Now let's see how much I can build in the final turn. I know it's stupid not building my Viceroy, but I had some and I just wanted to mix it up. So blue, green, blue. We can build. We can build this one here. What do I want to? Now, oh, but it'll give me the green bonus, guys. Hmm. Now, but I can build this with just my infinite gemstones, and so I will. 
to get two more infinite gemstones. I just think it's more overall valuable now that I think about it. And they're both going to be red. And now I can spend these two infinite gemstones for the next building phase here. Uh, but this one would need a red and a yellow. So instead I'll make one yellow. And I'll build this guy here to get another magic scroll. And then I will put this as a final one at the bottom. You can't see it, but all it's getting me is a scroll, and I pay a blue to get it. Come here, magic scroll. There we go. Now, it's the end of the game, and any extra tokens you have not meaning infinite gemstones, but extra. You can use to paint any of the four quadrants of a circle to try to make them the same color. I don't know that I will be able to pull that off here. Because the ones that are complete, I can do it here. I'm placing this red one here to paint over this spot and turn this into a completed red, because the rainbow can work for that. This is completed yellow. This one... I can't get to be complete. Are there any close to being green ones? This guy here. Painting it there to make it a green one. So we have to remember that those are not infinite gemstones. Those are painting our, our corners. Now let's score up. Remember, this is the scoring, and it's simplified on, on our scoring sheet. All right. In for Michael. So, this is for every completed circle, plus any bonuses for it. So blue, how many blues do we have? That's a three-pointer infinite gemstone, blue. I don't know we're not doing infinite yet, we're just doing completed blue. Um, yeah, we have a blue here worth three points. We have no blue multipliers. There are three for blue. Red, we have a completed red here worth three points. Brings us to six. Completed red here, worth two points, brings us to eight. Same again here, brings us to ten. So ten points, plus, uh, where's my red bonus multiplier guy? I forgot to put that down. Let's get that. I'm doing this in a dumb way. Sorry, let me, let me figure this out good and proper. There it is. Oops. My fault. Ugh, how do I want to do this? Alright, so, uh, Let's just, so we had uh, 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 um, I gotta start over, I'm really sorry. All right, blue. I'm gonna pause it and work this out. This is getting ridiculous. All right, I worked it out. Uh, I did this as respective to blue, red, green, and yellow. So this is for gemstones completely painted holes or just completely full circles of a single color for those colors plus the bonus modifier so red of course helped me both ways because of that powerful multiplier same thing here with infinite gemstones and the level that they're on plus the multiplier which i had for red law cards they end up helping me in other different ways rather than direct points 
three direct victory points. I had my magic scrolls, which was two times three, I think it was. Yeah. Two times three, six. Other than for each set of these, I had one, you get 12, so I got one set of 12. That doesn't factor in the swords minus shields for opponents. So our grand total was 75 points. Not bad, or really bad. I actually don't remember or know. I feel like it's kind of bad. I feel like I should have more, had more um, multipliers for, for uh, gems since I was really going for that. But I did my best, and I'm not great at this sort of thing. And it was fun for me. I liked it. And uh, yeah, definitely give me any feedback, comments, suggestions. Try to be kind. I'm sensitive. Actually, you know what? I like it rough. You can be mean. It's all right. And uh, yeah, cleanup doesn't take too long with this game either. You just put the gyms back in the bag, set up the cards, etc. Put things back in their tubs. I really think the tubs for games like this are just much better than baggies because baggies sort of spill over each other. Whereas these, you kind of take out what you need, and it's a pot on offer. Other than you simply close the lid. I don't know, it just works out better. And anyway, here it is in its full grandeur. My pyramid of power. So much intrigue. Solitaire. Thanks very much for watching, I appreciate it a lot. Or listening, whatever the case may be. I'll see you next time.